This week's amazing guest with an even fan, more amazing uh, facial hair beard is, and what's even better about this guy, is his passion for developing coaches. A uh, good friend of ours, um, Coach Jens, that's Jens Robinson um, from the PFCA. And uh, yeah, a fantastic conversation of just, uh, I don't know, the thing that comes across to me is just like the straight up honesty um, there's some absolute gold in here to make to make us all as coaches think about what can we do to be better and the opportunities it really draws out that for me like the opportunities that lay ahead of us those that are involved in any level of sort of like coaching or teaching whatever that may be and it's definitely something in this one for people who are being coached as well and things and qualities to look for when you're trying to find a coach so don't just yeah. kind of dismiss them on and go oh this is just for pts and people that are coaching listen to it and go, can I see these qualities? And it will help you to find better people to surround yourself with, which you can then mean that you're going to get better results. So have a little bit of a listen to this one. Um, very Jacko. good point, Timbo, there. Yeah, yeah, very, very good point. Well, I, I, it's, just making, it's just making me think of like, well, what if someone's like, oh, I'd really like to have some some <laughs> good coaching. Um, and obviously there's the, there's the whole online platform, but we've also got a, um, a new workshop has been announced in Liverpool, 14th of May, the school class tenants are coming back to Liverpool for uh, the new 2022 workshop, which is a full workshop day experience, the movement, strength and play experience, where we cover absolutely everything you're going to want to do for your calisthenics training, whether that's handstand skills, whether it's muscle ups or whether it's lower body, whether it's mobility, whatever it is, it's all in there. It's a full day with the team coaches and uh, a chance to be around like-minded people for a day get some high class quality coaching and uh, hopefully really enjoy yourself and uh, make some progress with your training get booked on school of calisthenics.com head to the coaching drop down menu you'll find workshops and retreats click on there and you can book yourself a little spot on our website um so for n- for now Sit back and enjoy Jens Robinson from the Professional Fitness Coaches Association on the School of Calisthenics Movement, Strength and Play podcast. Roll that. Listen, players. (laughs) You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. What an absolute pleasure. I have got zero questions lined up because we've got Jens Robinson on. And when I chat to Jens, a very good friend of mine on the School of Calisthenics, we can literally chew the fat for an hour. So I was thinking when we started this podcast, there was going to be no need to prepare anything because we can just wax lyrical for the next 40 minutes and it will be epic. Jens, welcome to the podcast. Tim, Jacko, thank you so much for having me. I am as excited as I am scared as to how deep this rabbit hole might go and the fact that (laughs) we are constrained by time makes me feel nervous (laughs) like if there was no time constraint i I might feel a bit more relaxed but no i'm looking Uh, forward to it i don't know jacko you'll know better than me in fact you'll know entirely me when this podcast is going out but is jen's coming off the back of two very deep conversations or is there a is there a gap Uh, yes yeah um potentially yes We've been deep yeah. recently, Jens, with our previous We've been guests. Deep. Really? Because uh, yeah. all yeah. I know is following Jacko and the depth that he's gone swimming, he's got a full scuba suit at the moment. He's, like, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's gone free diving. Oh, but, yeah, but it's, it's, that's, that's not like... We're talking... Um, the, the, the previous podcasts were, were about, like, your subconscious mind and, like, not even, not even, like, going, it's not even about going deep. It's like, if you're going deep, you're trying to go, it's like, it's beyond that. It's like, blows your mind. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Don't we, worry. We we'll keep re- you. <laughs> we recently had a sports psychologist on with our mentorship for, for our coaches. So from time to time, we yeah. bring, like, uh, different guests in. And this particular guy, South African guy, so already, you know, he's a legend. He, um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's like, He's trying to find his space as a sports psychologist within functional fitness. So he's like, he does kettlebell sport. Um, he, he likes like the dark side of like pushing into that dark realm. And he has gone down rabbit holes of trying to understand the psychology behind like who gets to thrive in that dark space and who doesn't and what cues, whether they are external or internal, might 
facilitate better performance when approaching that and what have you. So he was on this, on this uh, like a webinar with our team, with our mentees, and he started like, like referencing some papers and going so deep that I was like holding a conversation with him and then I literally got to a point where I was like, I have no idea how deep this is going to go. I'm actually scared to just, <laughs> like, I'm just going to be quiet right now. Because <laughs> it's like, at what point is this, like, rele- like relevant? Because it is. It's very, very relevant, right? Um, but some people don't even know when to manage their own sleep or how, let alone, like, what cues to have when going dark. <laughs> <laughs> let's, um, let's just pull back a second. And if someone is, if we're not watching this on YouTube, you need to come and have a look at this to be able to sample uh, Jen's um, fantastic uh, facial hair that is going on. Uh, but Jen's, um, you know, you, you mentioned there about um, the coaches and, and, and your mentorship. Like, give us, give people, because there be, might be a couple of, there might be, might be one or two people listening that, that haven't come across, like, the PFCA or your work individually. Like, um, who, is, who is Jen's? And they might have noticed a twang in the accent. Where are you from? What's, what's the background for, for people and... And then um, I'm, I'm interested in like the the origins of the PFCA and and why that sort of why that came about as a, a bit of a to, to at least have a tiny bit of structure on the question for you. <laughs> awesome, no, awesome, Jacko. I think um, you know when you do these conversations, you this like intro thing that like you do for yourself. There's like many iterations of right, but I think the way that you yeah. just teed that up and and how it might just like feed the origin story of the PFCA sounds like a perfect uh, kind of segue to the whole thing. Um, so who am I? I'm... Do you want, do you want me to, shall, I have, shall I have a go at get doing, your, doing your bio, doing I your would, intro? I would love that. That would a- be so good. Absolute legend. Be- absolute, uh, absolute legend. Beautiful uh, facial hair um, from South Africa. Absolute lacquer China bro. Um, big, strong guy. <laughs> and... Um, and uh, all, all the good things, fantastic coach, trying to push coaches forward and, and make coaches, make better coaches better at coaching. Do you know there what? You I was going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Try uh, add, add some spice to that. Add some spice to that. You did that out of question why we got you on as a guest, if that was the best you've got. <laughs> you can do better than that, Jens. Oh, Try again. No. Yeah, yeah. No, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and I do put a lot of effort into my beard, so thank you for noticing. Um, <laughs> So look, I think in a nutshell, I, I actually came over to the UK to play rugby. So I played rugby, you know, rugby in South Africa is religion. Uh, it's what I wanted to do. It's everything like everything to me. And, and that whole pursuit to try and get to the top was, was the best learning I could ever have to become the man that I wanted to be, right? Like we can all agree on, mm. on what sport does and those failures and those comebacks and what have you. Anyway, so I came to the UK um, having played at the Lions in South Africa at a very young age, moved here when I was still uh, 18, 19 years old. Um, and the promises in which I had for my career just just didn't really work out as planned. Um, Who did you play for over here? So when I came here, I was playing at Ealing. Um, yeah. But I came, I only landed in the country like in Jan, so I was like in the back end of the season. Um, and then that was when they just set up their first like um, their like academy like pro level because they wanted to like really push on. This is like going yeah. back to like 2009, 2009 something like that. Yeah. Anyway, and uh, long story short, back then like uh, like those those contracts were so small, right? And I had my girlfriend who is now fortunately like <laughs> my wife and uh, the mother to my beautiful children, but. At the time, like we, I had no money. I had like nothing to my name. I was living in my grandmother's garden shed in North London, and I was like cycling everywhere. And um, it was just, it was like, it was one of those things where I, like I needed to decide what to do, and I managed to get an offer to go and play rugby up in Scotland for air. So I went up and played there for a couple of years, um, which the only way to describe it is a bit like paid amateur. Because you still need to have a job. You still need to, like, you're only training twice a week with the team. Everything else is just like, you know, you just crack on. Um, so that was an interesting time in my life. If I showed you a picture of how fat I got when I lived up there, 
I mean, I weigh, I weigh now, I weigh like 104, 105 kilos. Back then, I was sitting at like 125 kilos playing, playing hooker. Like, it was, it, it got bad. <laughs> it's... We could have like this actually. It's just a shame we haven't got the visuals of that because Jacko once booked up to over a hundred. So you could have you could have a really? fancy yeah, I've done a dollar. I've done a dollar before. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That wasn't on the Scottish diet, but I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine you go to the right place in Scotland. It can be easy to uh, well to get a yeah. high fat diet. <laughs> Dude, like between drinking weeknights with the rugby guys, um, <laughs> sometimes I was so broke that like dinner was like a one pound packet of sausage rolls for me and the wife like that's how broke we were for a period of time right um so like you can imagine and i was just like i was just so depressed because at that point i realized like i'm just like i'm going nowhere nowhere with my life and um and it wasn't until because of the setup i managed to get invited to a few um coaching sessions so i still get like my my level one and my level two with like the sru coaching what have you and then they brought in the uk sca where they set up like a strength and conditioning like like uh, certification for rugby, so I got involved with that, and then I started because I always loved the gym. I've always loved the gym. I've always been in the gym since uh, since I was a lighty, like I, uh, since I was a youngster. Sorry, I used to like always coach and help my friends. Like it was just it was just part of my life. Um, being what so, was that word for what was that word for youngster? A lighty, a lighty, lighty, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, it, when I was in that environment, it was incredible. I started to like, started to like really get excited about things. And my friend at the time, he was head of like youth development for the SRU, um, a fellow South African. His name was Bossy, Bossman. Uh, Tim, you might be familiar with a few Bossmans that you might have <laughs> met in your life. Um, so he was he was integral in getting me involved in this like this like coaching thing and i started to go like wow i really want to do this so then i started studying to become a personal trainer and I, i've never like in school i was like always like i was like kind of good enough to get by but i never really like got to it from an academic point of view and as soon as i started studying this like coaching thing I've never, like, you couldn't get me out of the books. Like, it was, like, it was mad. So mm. I remember when I first actually wanted to get, like, qualified as a personal trainer, my, the first thing I ever did outside of this, like, UK SCA S&C thing for rugby was, like, a an American, like, NASM kind of online PT thing or whatever. And <clears throat> you couldn't get me away from the books. I was I was training twice a day, like, because I wanted to, like, sort my shit out with rugby. I was working in construction full time and then I'd be studying to like 2 a.m. every night just because I really wanted, like I was so passionate about this like new thing, this interesting thing. And I must say there was something about that book and I couldn't tell you what was in it or what was it about other than like there were, there were value systems in there that still stand true to me today and the kind of coach I want to be. Um, and the way this textbook was written it was a textbook, but there were so many anecdotes that just made me feel like, wow, I really want to be that guy. I want to be able to change lives like this guy can. And if you were to ask me any time in my life, if, like, what is one unique thing about you? It would be the fact that I can see like, hidden potential in people more so than anyone can see it in themselves. So if I were to have a conversation with you, I would be able to really see what you can't see, and I'd want to be able to facilitate you getting there because I love seeing that happen in people. So like this fire started to ignite as a personal trainer and long story short, I ended up leaving Scotland, moving to London, setting up as a personal trainer in like LA Fitness and then started like that whole commercial PT route. Now, as we discussed, we're not here to talk about how bad the industry was, but I was part of the, that cohort of like, just really bad. I mean, I remember because I had this SNC background, I was like, I'm just going to thrash people. I'm going to be the hardest trainer in the gym. And I mean, this was like a gym where you had like, there was 24 trainers at this LA Fitness. Like, how do you differentiate, right? So I just differentiate. Grow like, a beard for a start. Well, back then, Jacko, you would have loved this. <laughs> I had highlights in my hair and I had a, I had a, Obviously. I had a mullet, which was highlighted purple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we need that photo. We need that photo. I feel like you two are like two kindred souls, like two fat, <laughs> mulleted rugby players. This is like epic. 
Oh, I well, thought well. I couldn't like you anymore. Oh, and then I find this out. Oh, how brilliant. has this been a secret? Oh, how many how many mullet how many mullet sort of uh, uh, flavored t-shirts did you own oh. as a result of being a wearer of a mullet? All of it. Numerous, of it. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> assuming. I even had a goose tip as a hooker. <laughs> Of course you, do. you can't have you can't have a mullet and not have a goose step. Oh man, I'm Heck we're, of the gods. Oh, we're we're getting lost. We're getting lost. So um, this is great. This is so good. <laughs> bring us back. Bring yeah, us back. Yeah. So um, so anyway, the... just picturing it: yellow, yellow tints, purple, and that's the color. If I'm not mistaken, that's the color of LA Fitness. Was it not yellow and purple? Uh, I think it was just purple. I think it was just purple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I might have issue on brand. I might have, I, I might have been on brand. Yeah. Anyway, and then basically, I was just I was I was part of the problem, right? And then I started to realize that um, I I want to I want to do better for the people that I was, uh, I was serving, right? I wasn't getting the results outside of like the weight loss stuff, but like in terms of like their movement, their movement capacity, their pain, like I, I didn't have the solutions to the problems that it was that I was being faced. So I went down like yeah. all those. Um, sports massage like courses and all that kind of stuff and that really sent me down like a an, an anatomy kind of rabbit hole that got really exciting for me and once i started to do some cpd then i couldn't stop to the point that then i grew like a very successful personal training business out of a out of this facility which then allowed me to go ahead and open up my first gym at the age of like 24 open up a, a gym in london and I was like, cool, like, this is my platform. I'm going to build this, like, you know, CrossFit was just becoming quite a cool thing then. And, um, you know, in mm. London, and I wanted, like, this s and type feel, this CrossFit feel. And I reckon I had, like, the answer to create this, like, really cool package. And we still joke about it today, how I was ahead of my time in terms of what I created in this facility. And the quality of coaching was amazing. Like, the energy was good. But one thing that, that I, I noticed more so than ever was like, despite the amount of time that I had spent as a student of the game, getting my team to buy into that same level of like, just wanting to learn and then coach to that standard just never happened. Um, and it was getting like really frustrating. And um, as like all these little challenges come and growing a business, I mean, Ollie and I spoke about this yesterday, where it was like, so many people become busy personal trainers, and then they go into opening up a gym, you couldn't be further away from the truth about thinking that you're good enough at opening up a gym. There's so many things that you need to learn before you are quote unquote ready. So I opened up a gym, thought if I built, if I built, if I built it, they will come. It wasn't the case. I had all my PT clients, but I still had to go and learn how to do this, and let alone develop the staff to be able to be able to uh, coach at a good standard. And as I started to develop this like syllabus internally, um, and this is now going a few years of being a gym owner, I, um, Oli and I, we played rugby together, so we had like a really good like mutual um, respect for each other. Obviously, a really good friendship. You've you've showered. You've you know you've showered together. You've well, seen each other naked. I mean, it, if it you want to make friends, that's how that's how you do it, right? Like, I, like <laughs> it's like you could go to the pub, or you should just shower together, and then and then all is good. <laughs> is that what we're doing next weekend, Jens? That's the only <laughs> reason formats. why you were invited. <laughs> uh, I've I've already got like a. I think I've showered with Jacko before. We just. We, I, I, I can and I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> One of those moments. Uh, so uh, I kind of blocked it out of my memory. So yeah, anyway, anyway, anyway. So um, so then we were, Oli and I were having this discussion. We were like, you know how other trainers will sit and talk about other trainers and be like, oh my, look, what is he doing? Look how shitty he is. Look how bad that is. And one day him and I were talking and we were like, rather than being like everyone else, we, we, we need to try and like help these guys. Like we have a platform to be able to help them between Ollie's reach and inspiration and my ability to like see potential and help and like help create courses and systems. Like we can do something here. We can help someone like help people. Ollie would often get messages like, how do I learn to do what you do? Like, where do I start? Like, I want, like, I'm inspired mm -hmm. by you, you know? 
So he was getting all these messages and I, at that point, my personal, my personal training business was largely other personal trainers paying me a lot of money to not only coach them as athletes, but develop them as business owners. So together we were like, do you know what? We can do something here. So when we sat down, we spoke about our values for Ollie, him and his big driver was to be able to professionalize what this job role is. Because for most people, it's like, it's like if you were to meet someone, at, let's use the pub, meet someone at the pub and you go, I'm a personal trainer, like they might go, oh, cute. You know, like, oh, you wear like gym gear all day. Like, when are you going to take something serious? You know, when are you going to do a real job? You know, which we can agree, like, well, that, that's not, not really the case. Do you know what I mean? But how could we change that? So for Ollie, that was a really, real important thing. And for me, it was kind of like, if the standard is so poor, imagine if my mom finally wanted to take up fitness and she went to the local leisure center and she got access to what was and might still be the industry standard that wouldn't be a good experience for her. The likelihood is, is she'll probably get injured and not want to then therefore continue this, this, this endeavor of trying to get healthy, get strong, what have you. So together it was like, we can, we can raise the standards. Now that, 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 that ideal, that like novel line is easy to be said. It was like, how can we do this? So our first iteration of this like education business was originally called the SEA, the Stronger Coaches Academy, which in fact is when like we did, we came up and we met you guys yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And, and we set up this really cool mentorship with like 12 weeks, weekly lectures and all these kind of like all these really cool things. But the first year of that business, like the intake was insane. Like the amount of coaches that we got around the world I think in our first intake, we hit like nine different countries or something crazy like that. And it was like, wow, like this is going to be amazing. And then after like a couple of iterations, we looked at it and our, we asked ourselves a question. It was like, is this actually going to make the impact that we want to make? Because if you're only going to do a hundred odd coaches a year, what are you actually doing? You're not, you, you're barely making a dent. If there's 20,000 PTs in the industry, like, a hundred here, a hundred there doesn't really matter. Yeah. So we sat back and we 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 basically re-identified the entire business to, to to what it is today as the PFCA, the Professional Fitness Coaches Association. And there were people amongst the team that that helped to facilitate this transition and 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 in our circle to be able to move into where we are today. And there's been. Is that well, then the same? Is it the same business, Jens? You just like rebranded yourselves? Yeah, effectively. Well, effectively yeah, yeah, yeah. So, th so then the big thing was we wanted to come out with a similar type course to that mentorship, but mm. one that met the industry where it's at, which is this functional fitness world. And we created this yeah. course called the Functional Fitness Coach Level One, and it was to be able to bridge that gap between like, okay, you're a qualified personal trainer. You're seeing all this like functional fitness stuff going on, but you have no idea about the applied biomechanics that's going on. You have no idea about the principles behind how to program it, how to periodize it, how to assess movement, whether or not people are ready for it or not, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And even like from a corrective exercise standpoint, like how do you integrate this? How does it become a bridge between like PT and actual performance or does this remain like a weird physio session that you're not qualified to do? And, uh, and that's, and that's what we went and, and created and like then lockdown happened, right? So lockdown happened, the first lockdown epidemic. And it was like, what are we going to do now? And, and we were like, Hey, well, we just put out like a six week free course where it was like delivered via zoom. Um, and, we were having hundreds, hundreds of coaches tune in live for this. And at the end of those six weeks, what happened was the way that we strategized the launch, the relaunch of the PFCA, like the, the launch of this business, mentorship was meant to come at the end. And the whole thing was like seminars and, and like all these different like activations and eventually get to this point. But because of that free course, at the end, we had so many people yearning to have more time with us, to be able to learn from us and, 
and be mentored by us. So we ended up launching the mentorship, which was in fact going to be the last part of the, the release. And, and that's kind of where the business had ended up growing because of the, the, you know, the pandemic. So then we had mm. this mentorship and then we had the FFC course, which when we brought it to market, that, that like really took off like a house on fire and it it's really leveled up a, a huge cohort of, of coaches. And, and it's something that we definitely like, we, we, we're super proud of and we want to keep pushing that out. And then we've got this like, then all of a sudden we had loads of gym owners come to us who are inspired by what Ollie's been able to create and want to have the same. So then it's like, okay, well, hold on. We're mentoring now personal trainers from the start of their career. You've got personal trainers mm-hmm. five years in lacking fulfillment. How do we help them? You've got young gym owners who are just about to mm-hmm. go into gym ownership or some of them have had gyms for years and want, and can't find the success that they thought they were going to get. But yeah. because yeah. Ollie and I have been fortunate enough to be in every single sector, whether it's personal training in a commercial facility, a private studio, being a gym owner, staff development, you name it. Yeah. Because we've got skin in the game, we're able to, to help these guys. So to just bring it all back, the PFCA yeah. is born out of being able to professionalize what it means to be a personal trainer and to help you build a business that you love, that you're proud of, but helps you live your best life. Whereas it's very easy to just help you make more money, but at the cost of what relationships or what level of health. Yeah. So that's kind of, in a long-winded way, that's kind of where we are today. Yeah. I think from, a, from the, like, it's interesting, as you said, like the, the, you were thinking you were going to do the mentorship bit last almost, but actually people were or as coaches seeing the value in going like that coach we've all done it like that coach is great i'm going to use either i'm going to use some stuff from them or even better still i'm going to go and learn more from that person and i think that that is a tr- that is a because um, what the, the my next sort of question or what i'm thinking about and is and this is this is actually to to both of you not just to jen so tim as well like what what makes a good coach? Because that that, that, that like, little scenario there, of, of, for me, like one thing that makes a good coach is like the willingness to like want to to learn from others or um, to want to be mentored is like a, a is a great trait to make me a good coach. I'm wanting to learn. Like that's going to help me be be a good coach. And, and this could be wider than just PT, um, just like coaching in general. Because this is one of the things that I see to sort of kick it off of like. Coaching's coaching. Coaching is communication. It's understanding individuals, but understanding group dynamics and being able to work within those things. The thing that if, if someone's good at coaching, if you give them enough of the information for them to understand it, they could go out and a, a good coach we could go and coach anything so long as they know the material that they're, that they're delivering. Um, I happen to say that Jens has got probably more than one slide on this in one of his many <laughs> presentations. So I'm just going to let him go. You go, Jens. What is, I know oh, I've seen the content around this. I'm sure oh, I have. you I have was, got slides was, on this. I was waiting for you to, uh, to go. I think, do you know what? Like, no, I will wait until you both said your thing, then I will look more intelligent by adding additional. You, you add a little bit of spice on top. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good. He's like, he's like salt bay of coating. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I think without sounding like, um, yeah, too generic. I'd rather just like kind of come at this as a different angle. So when I take like consultation calls with coaches coming to me going, I want to grow this, I want to achieve this, we need, I need your help. How can, you know, how can you and Ollie help me grow this, right? One of the first things that I notice and I look for is just like passion and communication skills. So you're right. Like, just, just that ability goes a long way. The, the people that can talk well, oh my word, like you see them grow to different levels, okay? But I think the biggest thing is, and I just use that word, there's like the levels, there's levels to the shit and people don't respect the levels, right? Like in your first five years, you just need to assume that it's like, it's your apprenticeship years, right? And how can you expose yourself to as many sets and reps 
and people and communication styles and delivery styles and methods and programs and men mentorships and courses. How can you just be this incredible apprentice? Very few people are willing to do that for long enough. And like, I generally believe that's five to seven years. It's not six weeks. And like, it's definitely not three months. I think that's like one thing. And then it's like, once you are willing to just be that person, but know that like, from day one, when like we talk about this in the PFCA, your level three certificate is your ticket to start your apprenticeship. It's your ticket to start the apprenticeship. So now you have a license to go. The problem is loads of people go, okay, I'm now qualified. I can charge £45 an hour for personal training. Thank you very much, right? Like we deliver level three now because we felt that if we're really going to make a difference in the industry, we need to make it at the grassroots level so that the trainers that are coming into the industry have a better value system to go and truly help the people that they serve. And like if we talk about what makes a great coach, it's really strong values and principles. It's knowing who you are and what's important to you. It's knowing your boundaries, right? And then knowing your skill set and like where it starts and ends and to be able to go and help people. At the end of the day, like what an amazing job, I'm swatting flies away, what an amazing job we have to be able to help people, right? Like you have much more of a license to help people than a physio, a doctor, anyone, because people are willing to see you two, three, four times a week. Like, like wow, you know, absolutely crazy. So it's like, it's just, it's just recognizing that at that like ground level, like, you just need to come in at this a bit like, you know, the stonemason parable. I mean, I definitely know Tim knows it. I feel like you would as well, Jacko. You know, where it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the traveler walks past the different stonemasons, right? And the one guy is like, oh, I'm chipping away these stones. The next guy is like, oh, I've got this whole pile to do. And the next guy is like, I'm building a cathedral. Like as trainers, like you're building like so many people's lives, right? And it's like, you're not just impacting your client. If they go back and they've got better intentions and better systems that when they're going back into the household, that now you impact their husband, the kids, you now change their lifestyle and what is the, the, like deemed good so that their kids' kids, all of a sudden it's a huge knock-on effect. Like that's, that's the level of impact we get to have, but train, some trainers fail to see that, right? So then once you spend those five to seven years to like grow and expose then you can start to become a leader of of yourself and a leader of others where you're looking to now just reiterate and refine right so how can you develop your system the jacko system the tim system because then you've had enough exposure to go i've tried this i failed that i've tried this i failed that this seems to work with this demographic mm -hmm. but it only it takes so long to get there and then only after let's say 10 years are you then in a position of like, like let's say mastery, right? And it's not because you're a master, it's because now you feel like you have a refined method that you can go and now perhaps teach others or give back to others in a little bit like, I talk about it as fitness philanthropy, right? It's like your way to go and give back to the world. Just because now you've done everything, if you're a super successful personal trainer, or gym owner, you almost get to a point where like, not, there's not much more you can do unless you go like crazy. Um, so now it's just like, how can I impact more, right? And that's gonna be fed largely by one big like underpinning thing about what makes a great coach, is like humility and curiosity, right? Like you guys are the, probably the, like if there's a value system we all share, is that we're super curious. Like, how did you do that? Or why, why do you think that way about that? Right? Or I want to learn more about that because that seems interesting. Like that might answer a question that I know I'm struggling with, but I can't even articulate what this question is. I'm willing to go down that route. And I think that's, in a, in a nutshell, a good coach is someone who's super humble and super curious to be able to find solutions to help more people. Very good. That was good. I actually, yeah, I, I would be echoing a lot of what you've already said. I agree on all levels. Um, I think there's just I'm there's curious. something. I'm, I'm curious as, as if Tim's got anything else to offer. 
<laughs> I don't know. Like, I think I, <clears throat> maybe I'll just I'll, I'll add some flavour, right, or some 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 context from my own experience because I've been I've walked that path, right. So I've I've done my 14 years in S and C. Before I was an S and C coach, I was a scuba diving instructor. Before I was a scuba diving instructor, I taught, taught disabled people to ski. Before I did that, I was teaching rugby or coaching rugby at different levels and including my under 12s men's or <laughs> men's boys <coughs> a rugby club where they're like the coach oh, were like you in Tim South Africa, captain. Were you? <laughs> 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 the, the coach is like Tim, you're the captain, go and take the warm up. So I've stood in front of people coaching and instructing since I was 12 years old nonstop. And that's when I now walk into a room full of people. And to Jack, at your point before, like if you've got those skills, like you, if I know my subject, I, I can probably coach anything. But it comes to a point of where it's autonomous. I don't get nervous talking in front of a room full of people. You could literally go, there's a room full of guys there next door now. Rugby players, go and teach them a session. With zero prep time, I'll go and deliver a half-decent session. Because you've just you've put those reps in the game and you've got that skin that you just go, okay, I've done all of this before. I'll walk into the room and I'll look around and I'll identify the key individuals. Who are those people who I need to get on board to bring the rest of that squad with me? What level are they at? How is their kind of general um, demeanor? Like that, all of that is like, just subconscious information which you're gathering because you spent so much time around people and this is when people like i reflect back on my own journey like the people like scuba diving instructor for three years australia and zanzibar i tell people i was a professional beach bum but i was actually like if you look at what you what you do in that environment and this is where i don't think coaches get enough broad context they don't they're not generalist enough i've got eight people who rock up on day one, who I'm going to take underwater with, with underwater breathing equipment on. Some of them are not very confident in the water, but they want to see fish. Like, how do I get those guys, like, on board, feeling safe and secure? And ultimately, they're paying me for an experience. They want to have a good time. So I need to entertain them as well at the same, at the same point, as well as getting across quite highly technical and potentially life-impacting information as to how you're going to go and do this thing properly and safely. And I, I think that's where we've, we've lost our way a little bit because they made the barriers to entry to the fitness industry so low that you could literally get qualified in a week and become a personal trainer and know nothing about the complexity of, human, of the human body and physiology, let alone nutrition, before you even start going down those routes. And lifestyle change, behavior change, all the things that actually are wrapped around that, that role of somebody coming to you and going i want you to take responsibility for my health and well-being is, is effectively what we should be doing from a, from a personal coaching relation uh, perspective so now when i hear people are going i've been two years i think of going online i'm like you don't earn the right to go online like because online is even harder because you can't even then go and see that person you 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 all make i make i do online coaching now but i make judgments based on 25 years of of coaching that for subliminal things that you're picking up, things I've seen before, the way people talk to you. And I, I think that's, for me, if I'm going to wrap all of that into what makes a good coach, like, you've got to, it's, it, it, it's accepting that we don't always have all the information. So you don't have to go and find somebody who's been 15, 20 years in the industry. You can be a good coach at, tw at 12 months in if you have some of the qualities that, that or, or as many of the qualities that Jens has been talking about. But it is that willingness to try to be humble, to partner with people, to accept that you don't know everything, that you might be wrong, but you are, you are informed enough to make safe decisions and, and you can make effective decisions at quite an early stage. So when I used to do coach mentoring, I would have one of the boxes on, on our observation sheets when we were given feedback was, was that session safe and effective? For a year one coach, that's fine. If it's safe and effective, it's okay. It doesn't need to be whistles and bells. Um, and I think you, yeah, you then identify people who have got some of these characteristics, but a, a badge on a T-shirt or a, a one-week certificate is, isn't enough um, to, for people to actually have the authority to do this job properly. There's probably some stuff in there, you, Jens, you want to bounce off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've, you've said a few words there that like, I really want to pick up on. Um, I'll, I'll pin experience-led. I'll bring that like at the end. And I think one thing... If, I'm, if I put this in context to actually what goes on in the industry, just to give you guys some insight. As a, <clears throat> like we now um, have a license to be able to teach level two and level three, right? And in going through that journey, largely what we were trying to do is, can we just create our own level two, level three? And almost like scrap those words and just come up with what we believe is the actual course curriculum to give 
people the authority and the, and, and the minimum skill set to actually have them go and, and, and help people, right? That informed level to actually facilitate this job. Anyway, it turned out you can't, right? You have to follow set guidelines. I won't go too deep into as to why. But then if you think about what you're talking about, which is like the communication skills, the soft skills, the philosophy, the movement models, movement efficiency, and so on and so on. That is like even behavioral change, motivational interviewing, those things are considered irrelevant. They are like not even on the list of like things that they need to learn. What? So when we came out with our level three and, and like looked at this, the, the iteration that we want to do, if we're going to come up with like something that's going to make a difference, we were like, hey, how can we deliver a product that meets the minimum guidelines as per what is required, but then how can we bring across the values that we deem are most important? So like what we've been able to do is we've, we have an online platform where you go and you learn the stuff about like, here's the heart. And bro, it's not even humorous. It's an upper arm. It's an upper arm. <laughs> what? A lot of the, a lot of the like anatomy and physiology is like, I, I haven't done, I, I wasn't educated in this country, but it's like, it's like a level biology, right? It's very simple. But then what we've been able to do is add those consultation skills, those motivational interviewing skills, the movement assessment skills, so that we can come up with a model that we deem exactly what you said is safe and effective. We, we even talk about an exercise library. It's like, hey, think about all these exercises and we like do it like on Zoom, right? It's like enter 10 exercises for a knee dominant unilateral pattern. And you'll just see like, all these things like pop up. We like give them 30 seconds, press enter, and you just see like all these, all these exercises come up. And then we do this drill where we go, okay, now if we were to take them all away, now give us three, right? So basically what we've been able to do is most trainers, and I, and I mean this to like even like the five-year trainers, right? You'd be better off having a smaller exercise vocabulary that you understand at a much, much deeper level that you can then go and coach and communicate effectively to your clients, build them to a level of autonomy that then you can go and get them strong at doing the, the thing. Rather than all this complexity and novelty, we, like, we've literally brought it down to like, we call it 21 and done. Like there's probably 21 exercises between your squat patterns, your knee dominant unilateral stuff, your hip dominant unilateral stuff, your upper body work, your core work, by the, your carry stuff. By the time you've taken those seven, come up with three at each, you're sitting around 21 exercises. Find a way in which you can dose appropriately, develop them, and continuously assess whether or not it's been effective or not. That's it. That's it. It's simple, right? But then it comes back to, like, you're trying to find complexity in a, in a, in a world that doesn't need to be complex from an exercise prescription point of view, what, you, what is complex is the human, right? And getting them to buy into it. And you just hit the nail on the head, just bringing us all back to the experience. It's like, if you can't make this experience something that is rewarding and challenging and make them want to come back and do it again, then what are you doing? So like, you might have like the technical coach is like so technically astute, but has no personality, mm -hmm. much like a scuba diver uh, the instructor, is able to make this like really, really cool, right? Like we need that. Or you've got this like clown who's like super fun and entertaining, but has no technical prowess. Like we need to, like we need to agree that like a personal trainer, a good coach is someone who gets to bring both in. And I love what you said earlier, Jacko, like you said personal trainer and then you said coach of any sort. Like we can all agree. There was probably that one rugby coach that had that, had like both. Or there's probably that like swim instructor you had in school that had that, or the cricket coach, whatever. There was someone mm. who now you can look back and go, I can totally see that. Even down to that teacher at school who had the perfect yeah. relationship of like entertainment and, and like education. That's the, that's the model, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, th just, like on something that, that like from an experience, the experience side of it was one thing I was going to, going to touch on. And what you're making me think there is, is just of it being, there's two sides to experience. 
there's the experience of go and coach stuff and it just doesn't matter what it is just go and get used to coaches and build up those skills of communication of managing people in one-on-one managing groups of people whatever it is and like as tim said about being confident in that i believe that the confidence in that comes with from one experience but two knowing your material if I asked him to go into that room of people and it's in and, and coach them on something he's never like done before, like the piano, he probably won't be as confident. But knowing Tim, he probably quite do quite well blagging like even just something, <laughs> something like that. But you know what I mean? It comes down to like if I if I know what I'm talking about, I'm confident. If I don't know what I'm talking about, it ain't gonna go that well. But then the other side of the experience is how much experience have you had of being coached? Mm. because when you have been coached by lots of different coaches if you've been coached by really good coaches great you can take the things that you notice about them and go why was that good in terms of my experience of being coached by them and which elements of that resonate with me so that i could maybe add that to my repertoire but equally what about all the crap coaches you've had or the bad coach you've had or the great coach what was the stuff that he did when it was like or they she did he whatever did that want right and then you can start to use your experience of being coached to start to then mold your own coaching and the uh, the thing that i'm quite when if i'm speaking to some people at the moment around like coaching mentoring that type of stuff of like there's a phrase that keeps coming up for me of like finding your own voice in mm-hmm. that like if you if i like something i like the way jens explains that or does this da, 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 right i then can't try and use your words to do it I've got to still find my way with it. And that then allows us to be confident to deliver. I think that any time that we're not being true to ourselves is when we find it difficult to deliver our message. But we need to understand. So then we're talking about like understanding our own self and doing a little bit of like internal work. But I definitely think that there's the experience of like just experience of being a coach, but then experience of being coached. I am definitely when I'm at my when I'm at my best. And when I'm coaching at my best, I am doing an iteration of all of the best coaches that I've ever been lucky enough to be coached by, all teachers at school, all these different types of things, like sort of rolled into my version of what that might look like. 100%. Tim, did you want to say something there? No, you go. Uh, I said this was going to go deep, right? And now I'm like, damn. Um, I love what you (laughs) said there. I think there's like, there's so much to be said about understanding the virtue of being coached. So much. I think some of the best le- learnings I've had is the times where I've gone and hired expert coaches, paid for their programming or their coaching or whatever, because it's through doing that you see this, the, the, the nuance, yeah. the, the, like the application, right? Like, Seminars are great for like relighting the fire, right? Like having that fire and like, 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 I guess reigniting it. But it's when you go and you get mentored or coached by these people that you, you learn some incredible things. One thing I will say about that exposure experience that you're talking about as well, there's a guy called, um, Dr. Greg Rose. He's, um, <clears throat> he's the, head of the Titleist Performance Institute. I actually brought it up with Tim last week <clears throat> and um, he was sharing a, an anecdote about him him learning um, at like Cairo school, right? And um, he's like going through year one and they're learning all this anatomy stuff. Um, <clears throat> and then um, he was like, so when do you start like touching people? When do you start learning how to crack and stuff? And, and one of his <laughs> like fellow one of his like fellow uh, students was like, well, oh no, there's a massage class after school at this time, why don't you come? So he was like, okay. So he turns up and basically there's like 50 people in this room and there's 25 chairs in a circle. And basically 25 people sit down for a minute. Um, <clears throat> sorry, 25 people sit down and then you stand behind and you have to start massaging their necks. And every minute you have to transition to the next person and the next person. And this guy, this, this guy is like, I've never massaged anyone. I don't know what I'm doing. And his, 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 his fellow student was like, it doesn't matter. Just start touching. So he was like, okay. So he starts like, starts touching. 
And he's like, he looks at him and he's like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And then a minute buzz, it's like move over, like speed dating kind of thing. So you answer the next <laughs> person. So he's like, he starts touching. He's like, he's like, what, what are we doing here? He's like, you'll see, just wait. Next person goes to the next one. All of a sudden he's like, oh, that feels strange. Because it's only yeah. by doing that you get to experience like what was good, what was bad. And he was like, oh, this neck feels a little bit different to the last two. Oh, shit, there's something wrong here. You know, next, oh, wow, you're really tight on the right side. All of a sudden, by the end of, by the end of those 25 minutes, he was like, that was interesting. That, that gave me exposure that I didn't, I didn't know about, right? You can't read in a book. Let me pull it out. I'm gonna, I want to just get, we're going to take that thread of exposure and I want to talk about um, something for people that are listening. Maybe we've got people that are, that are not coaches or, in, or, or being coached or we are, I'm going to phrase this one. Our exposure to coaching, in inverted commas, is massive now based on the amount of attention we, we give to social media and the internet. So anybody can be a coach and has a platform to share their ideas and expertise. I'm just keen and interested to get your thoughts around that, Jens, of going like there is so many people talking about different things and, and you know how passionate I am about principles over methods. Um, we see a lot of methods, lots of things that people say you can do. And, and, and for me, like my perspective on this is I think people get confused because there's too much input. And just, I'm not even going to tee that question up. Just talk to us about this kind of like the, either the synergy or friction of, of, this, of this idea of working with somebody on something versus this kind of plethora of information which we are getting bombarded with and how confusing that potentially can be for people. And, and how do we navigate through it? Because I, what I know is like re solely relying on what, what my, the algorithm feeds me is not an effective way to, to master or learn or progress, is in my opinion. I think this is a great question. I don't want to do this any injustice here, but I think, I think there's like two things, right? There's, there's one where it's like, if there's, a, if there's someone you're learning from that has come up with, quote unquote, a method, and let's assume that they are now therefore a master, right? So, Jacko, you're learning all things breath from a man who's been going through it for a very, 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 very long time. He so certainly has a method that he's come up with because of all this exposure, trying, whatever, right? Yep. T Tim, you are now delivering what you deem is your method based on all your experiences and all the rest of it. I think as the person therefore receiving it, it's important to recognize that like you do yourself an injustice by trying to overindulge information from multiple people without just doing one thing, ingesting it, digesting it, absorbing it, then utilizing that energy for long enough Almost to the point that like, if over the next 10 years, you only learn from five people, but over each two year period, you did the thing properly, that would probably be better than trying to do multiple things at once and go nowhere. It's a bit like that client who wants every single goal under the sun, but like, do you know what? If we just focus on strict chin ups, you might get a muscle up, but if you want muscle ups, strict chin ups, handstand press ups, and a human flag all at once, you're just wasting time. So it's like, it's like one of those things where it's like, it, it goes back, this is very deep, it goes back to know yourself, know what's important to you, what your values are, know through those values, are you able to stay authentic and coach appropriately to the, the audience that you have, the people that buy from you. And through that, once you start to see holes or opportunities, let's say, Find someone in a position who has been there, done that, and created their own system and method and invest everything you can from energy, from time, from money that is appropriate and do the thing until you understand it and you like it or you get to a point where, do you know what? I went down a rabbit hole. I did it completely like all in, but it wasn't worth my time. Let's say this breath work stuff for my mouth breathing population is just not going to work but then at least you know it to the 10th degree so you can hold a good conversation. That to me, that's what should be really exciting about being a coach. 
Yeah. I think find, finding out that something doesn't work isn't at all a waste of time. It's actually no. you found out something that doesn't work. And I think that we often we see those types of things as like, oh, yeah, well, what if it doesn't work? So I'm, I'm going to invest the time. And it's actually stopping, stopping thinking that, like, we've got to find the right thing. It's like, well, probably the right, th- the right thing might not even exist, but finding out loads of things that don't aren't the right thing actually push you in a direction to something that might be able to be formulated into something that does actually work. And like as Tim said about um, people, sort of how easy is it to um, confuse scrolling through Instagram or other social media platforms and thinking you're seeing loads of different things and thinking you're uh, gaining information because you're seeing lots of different exercise selections or whatever, but actually you're just confusing yourself with just far too much information. And <laughs> that's one of my favorite comments recently, right, for this little anecdote for this uh, for the last week. But someone commented on a, on, a, on a post of mine that said, like, I wasn't expecting to like this, but it's really good. Well done. Keep it up or something like that. I was like, a compliment. Interesting. Co- yeah, so I said to him, oh, why didn't you? Why did, I, I, like, I was so laughing. I was like, oh, why didn't you think you were going to like it? And he was like, oh, come on, mate. You're like, you know, this is Instagram. And therefore, everyone thinks that they found, a, like, a new way to do, like, basically, basically saying, like, most of the stuff you see on here is absolute BS. Like, it was actually interesting that this actually worked. And it was like, okay, that's, that's, uh, yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was, I thought that was interesting. I thought that was good. I think the same kind of like principles as we talk about this longevity and commitment to a process and to understanding a system from a coaching perspective also there applies to a user's perspective. So I, I, we've, Jack and I have spoken about this before and our encouragement around people now is like, if you're going to come into calisthenics, come in for a time. Don't mm. come for a month and think you're going to nail it. Come for a year and that's see where you are in a year. And because our approach is very much around educational, you might, may or may not leave with a handstand or a human flag after a year, but I promise you, you will come in and you will learn more about training in the process, which you can then go and apply into whatever endeavor it is or, or kind of form that you want to. But I think that's, that's where I'm kind of, I see the, the issue where people don't make the progress that they want is because they, they don't give these things long enough. Because there's so many people now offering different packages and pro- programs, it's very easy to hop around towards whatever kind of like is dressed up fancily within a marketing package on social and go, oh, that looks good. I'm going to go and do that for a bit. And then you're going to see this other apple cart. Over there. I'm going to go and jump on that apple cart for a while. And, and you get a whole lot of nothing. So I just think like it's we this 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 culture that we have a little bit where we've been drawn towards instant results. We'd be far better off as both learners and learnees, if we can call it that. Um, students is probably actually the proper word. Um, or coaches <laughs> and, and students, We're so you know, trainees. <laughs> but, but coaches like commit to your craft in the long term and commit to understanding your craft. And it's going to take ten years. It takes ten years to get ten years experience, and within that. That's not one hour a week. That's like immersive 10 years to get 10 mm. years experience. Mm. And if you, are, if you are a trainer looking to work with a coach, give that coach time. Like give that system time so you understand it because you can't get, you can't really kind of squeeze the juice out of something and fully understand it and get the benefits of it in two or three months. Calisthenics is hard, right? Give it a year and see, what you, see where you are in a year because you've got many more years. You can go and do something else, but at least commit to something for a meaningful amount of time, which means you actually give yourself the gift of an opportunity to be successful. And I love that. And I think, I think what the big thing there is like in that, in that commitment, you need to identify as being someone who does calisthenics. It's not just like, I'm going to try this calisthenics thing. It's like, no, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm someone who does calisthenics. Um, much like I am a coach who, like, I am a student, right? I am an apprentice. Like, like identify as that so that you're not trying to have these, like, weird moments of inconsistency and just, like, in, like moments of intensity and then you back off. It just needs to be elegant and consistent and, like, part of who you are. Because if, if that is an identity that you want to adopt, it becomes beautiful. It becomes like this incredible journey. Like I always talk about as personal trainers, you get to live this like this weird entrepreneurial life, right? You get to read the self-help books. You get to listen to the podcasts. You get to have the morning routine. Most people don't like, they, they don't get that kind of exposure. Like if I think of my friends that have corporate jobs, they're not thinking about self, self-development. They're just thinking about like, how long do I have to do this role until I get my promotion? Right, and that's it. 
right? Do I, do I get my 28 days holiday? Whereas we get to like go down this really weird self-development, like hippie vibe. And it's amazing. It's so cool. Like how privileged are we? We could probably do another hour on this, but we probably, we need to maybe wrap it because we are 60 minutes in. <laughs> and, uh, the, the commute for some people to work listening to this would have finished some time ago. So either they're still sat in a car or they're going to do a two-parter. Two, uh, two parter. But, Jens, thanks so much for coming on. I, 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 the one thing I love about you is your just passion for coaching and the mastery of the craft. And I think that is like, that is where we need people to be in the industry, just a championing how professional it is and what it takes to actually do this thing well because it is not something that you just go, I'm going to go and be a PT. And it is like, it's a hard job. And it's not an, it, because the, 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 the environment and the context is difficult. The skills that you've got to, to, to develop and, and grow take time. Um, but you, as you say, you, if you're passionate about it and you love it, you can have a, a massive impact on people's lives. So just keep shouting and then, uh, from, the, yeah. from, the, from, the, from, the, from the mountains, mate, and we'll support you all the way. Yeah. Yeah. I've got bumped up for you as well. Your, your authenticity just comes through like it's just it, it's straight up there's no there's no front there's no bs it's like you can you can tell by the way that you deliver it that that is and, and hence why you, hence why you're doing what you're doing because you just want to you just want to do it and i think it's i think you bring out something there that like on surface level people don't people don't the people don't see or people don't know people don't even realize about maybe themselves the opportunity that lays in front of them um so i hope that, that people will be inspired by the conversation two things jens we've got to ask one Go. where can people find you two promise you're going to send us a picture of that mullet <laughs> that needs oh, to go that does that surely that needs to be the the, the post for the social feed jacket isn't it? Yeah. Jens mullet. Like, that's his profile picture I've, I've got a picture of me with a rugby ball doing that doing that thing so do the goose step uh brilliant. i don't know if you can see the mullet where's my camera but like there's a mullet there uh... Right, no, send this, send that to us. <laughs> oh, man, this is terrible. So, but you're a hooker, uh, not a winger. <laughs> mate, gas for like five meters. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, thank you so much for having me. If you wanted to find me, you'd find me on coach underscore Jens, J-E-N-Z. Um, you can also find me and myself and my business partner, Oli, on the .pfca um on Instagram as well. So that's our coaching business where we yep. educate and mentor coaches. Um, and then in terms of the mullet, yes, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank Mate, you so, so much, much for your time. We're going to catch and your time and no, man. everything. You guys are legends and I appreciate your time. So massive thank you to Jens for coming on and sharing some coaching wisdom. You can tell how passionate this guy is about coaching. And I know that from a personal level as well, because whenever I have a conversation with Jens, he can't help but coach me in some way, which I appreciate when people are. <laughs> you've got people in your circle that are investing in you and trying to help you and seeing the blind spots that you have and, and making you aware of them in a skillful way is a really important. So go and find more good coaches and people who are going to build you up in your life. Yeah, we, we really hope that whether you are a coach yourself or whether you're being coached and probably you fall you fall into one of those two categories, you're either, or hopefully both. <laughs> you you spend some time coaching and you spend some time being coached and hopefully that um, that conversation with Jens has, has highlighted some things for that you can help to carry on um, either motivating yourself or helping to um, you know, make a commitment to, to your uh, ongoing development as, a, as an individual as well as being a as a coach potentially yeah perfect and that is the one kind of take home from me is make a commitment whether you're a coach yourself commit mm -hmm. to what you're doing if you're being coached commit to what you're to what the coach is trying to teach you um so i hope that has been useful and interesting please feel free to go to your listening platform and give us a review the um i the podcasts uh, you spotify your itunes it's not the itunes anymore is it our podcast and itunes is separate so i don't know where to send people anymore Send them to I. Oh, it, what is it? Not podcast on iTunes. Oh, like as in are, sorry, yeah, as in Apple Podcasts is a yeah, thing. It's all complicated, but yeah, anyway, yeah. you'll probably find your way around. Give us a little review. Ask, send any questions in as well. We haven't asked for this for a few weeks. We've taken a bit of a break from asking you to do things because we had quite a few deep podcasts. 
Uh, we're now in a position to ask for you to do things again. So give us a review, send us some questions. <laughs> we might like to do a 20 minute kind of quick hit out on answering your questions and queries. We like those podcasts, so send them into us. It's David at schoolofcalisthenics.com or Tim at schoolofcalisthenics.com, and um, we will get to those and maybe do a little special podcast just for your question. Uh-huh.